Welcome back to the European LCS. I'm joined here at the analyst table by Joe Miller and Martin Deficio Lunga to break down Alliance's win over SK Gaming. Guys, let's start and pick some bands because um, obviously SK coming in with a solid plan, but leaving the Twisted Fate open, not the best thing to do. Yeah, I think solid plan probably isn't the word. More of a risky plan because they ban Elise and then they hope Alliance will first pick Lee Sin because Elise and uh, Lee Sin are the two big junglers at the moment. So either they hope for first pick uh, Lee Sin from Alliance and then Jesus can pick up TF, a champion he's been spamming the last few days in solo queue, or they, were just, or they just want to trade them back and forth. Like, so you get TF, we take Lee Sin, we get a strong pick each, but then they don't have a counter pick for the Twisted Fates. So that idea was kind of weird. Yeah, it was a very weird start to, the, to pick some bands for me because we know that Froggen puts a priority in Twisted Fate and has already first picked it in other games as well. To leave that open then and hope that you are going to leave it, I mean, the fact is we can see that Jez has been spamming Twisted Fate, so Alliance know that he's been spamming Twisted Fate. If Twisted Fate's open and Froggen's already taken it before, why would he let Jezus get it? It was just very strange. SK didn't seem really there today. Yeah, they did mention it also on social media. There was a lot about how many, we, we, we can't make the mistakes we made last time, but it seems like maybe they realized they made those mistakes and it immediately transcended into the early game as well. Well, we can at least say they made a lot of mistakes. Like the entire game was actually SK Gaming mistakes. First blood on Candy Panda, he's playing Caitlyn. He has Morgana with him. Black Shield was ready for Unrated. The E from Caitlyn, the net was ready, the flash was ready, and yet he actually gets bobbled and ends up dying. I mean, there's no excuse. You can even see the bobble travel from Nami to hit Caitlyn. Black Shield from Unrated, flash it if you think you're gonna die from it. He didn't, first blood alliance. And then leaving into the dragon fight, which is the one we're gonna highlight now, so we can just pull up the replay on your guys' screen at home. The dragon fight itself is such a weird decision by SK Gaming and a big, big mistake once we actually get it up here. So it's paused now. Notice how Renekton, doesn't have teleport at this point. He already teleported to the top lane. Wicked does have teleport on Lulu, so he can always join in, making it five versus four if in favor of Alliance, of course. And if you just roll the clip here, we even see Candy Panda only has a pickaxe because he was forced to go back early. He couldn't get a BF sword, so he's very weak at this point. They're not able to kill Shook. They invest everything into killing one guy here. Oriana will this down. Caitlyn will this gone. And then Nami just comes in, or Nif comes in from the side. Beautiful tidal wave. And five mem members from Alliance can just clean up. Freddy is stuck in his top lane without teleport, and yes, they got the dragon, but it was such a terrible call, and there was no way they would ever get out of it alive, and therefore they just gave up even more gold to Alliance. And another black shield that came in really weirdly halfway through that, well, Jezus wasn't even in the fight, it was halfway through it, throw it onto him when you've got the tidal wave and bubbles to come afterwards. I actually think that N-Rated today as a whole seemed to be off his game somewhat. Yeah. You mentioned already the first blood, and I'm sure we're going to hear uh, via Twitter and what have you what exactly the problem was for SK today, but that's not the second place SK that we know. Yeah, a final question about that. We saw that they had three different opinions in the in the pre-video. Pre One saying, I can handle Frog and I play versus those players every day. Jess is Freddy saying, we're scared that that makes us make a mistake, and Candy, if we don't make those mistakes, we can handle them. How vital is it for as a pro team to go into a game with the same mindset? I think every team going in with the mindset of not making any mistakes, but if you're nervous going into the game, if Candy Panda and Raider was nervous in the bot lane for whatever reason, maybe it could be the reason they didn't play like we normally see them play. I mean, Jesus in the mid lane looked fine in the laning phase. He got a CS lead against Froggen because Oriana is a very strong laner and Twisted Fate is more just farm farm and then impact the side lanes instead. But overall, SK Gaming as a team, the calls weren't there. I mean, the misplays just for the players themselves. It just, it was a stomp. I mean, Alliance showed they were a the better team and SK Gaming once again also show the early game isn't the best thing for them. Yeah, and SK obviously realized this, you know, if you come in with different mindsets, in my opinion, you're never really gonna do well. Even if you come in with a bad mindset, it's good if you all have that mindset sure. because at least you're then on the same page. Although SK were on the same page, surrender after 20 minutes. I mean, they were at a point in the game where they knew that they'd already lost it and probably felt, you know, this is pointless. We're wasting our time with this one. We can go on and prepare for our next games. Yeah, you do need four votes to surrender. So some of them were on the same page. Anyway, they have to re uh, talk about this because they still have a match coming up later today so we can see how they can bounce back from that. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Now let's send it back over to Demon and Quickshot for our next match.
Damn, shots fired from Shock Set. <laughs> it is time for our next clash as Rocket faces Millennium. For both of these teams, a win means taking a step closer to guaranteeing a spot in the playoffs. And you could argue that a win for Rocket is even more important as it helps them ensure that they aren't looking at a possible trip to the promotion tournament. In London, Rocket went 2 0, taking down Millennium in a match that was very drawn out. And while it wasn't flashy, it was a win, and it did prove, of course, that Rocket can take games off teams that are currently performing well. Yesterday, Rocket battled Fnatic and Wolves. They went one on one, but even their victory was far from convincing as it took another 50 minute win. After hearing Overpower's interview with Shox, you have to think there are some serious confidence issues within the team right now. That was a heavy interview, D Man, and, and you don't have to think about it. I think it's a fact. They are absolutely terrified in game. They lack any conviction amongst any of their plays. And even when Rocket are ahead, they still play incredibly scared. And it's a big problem for a team looking to avoid relegation, as you've rightly pointed out. As a team, Rocket actually have the third longest games out of all eight European teams, taking over 41 minutes per game on average every game. I do want to say some positives though. I was excited to see Overpower playing Zerath. He did a pretty good job in the grand scheme of things. And seeing Rocket play different champions is what cemented them as a strong team during the spring split. But obviously it isn't always the best course of action. And I want to see if they do it again against Millennium, who are famed for running assassins in that mid lane. Well, for Millennium, they managed to take out the league's number two team SK Gaming last week. But they also dropped a match to Alliance. Their style of play, well, has the ability to do well. It does seem a fairly one-dimensional tactic, that's for sure. They tried something new yesterday, but it, as they have already proven, it didn't exactly work out for them. When they venture away from the pit comp and don't put Kerp on some form of burst champion, they seem lackluster in their gameplay. Yeah, and yesterday was a perfect example of that. Fnatic banned away all of Kerp's main champions, and he struggled to find any real impact in the game. A bigger problem than Kerp was, in fact, Cottonex, who ran Kha'Zix. It's a champion that is a very risky pick at this level of play, and Cottonex never got ahead on a champion that needs to get ahead, so he was simply bullied around the map and had no presence instantly being blown up by uh, Pekes Syndra. I think as a team, Millennium just continue to demonstrate the heaviest swings amongst the teams in Europe. And to explain that further, they either smash their opponents or they get smashed. And they need to think about their picks and bans as well as their in-game decision making to actually balance that out. Because you can't either be all in or all destroyed if you want to challenge for playoffs and maybe even Worlds. Well, even though Millennium managed to turn around their performance after facing relegation in the spring split, Rockets Yankos thinks the team's success hinges on the trackball ace in the mid lane and will look to take down Kerp. So Rocket is an interesting team. They sometimes they do really really well and sometimes not so well. They seem to struggle sometimes, play good sometimes. So yeah, I just think they need more consistency. I think every single team can take game out of Millennium right now. Sometimes they don't know what are they supposed to do, and sometimes they play really good. So it's like 50-50 if they play good or bad. I think the key factor for Millennium is Kerb. Kerb is this dominant mid laner and he likes to roam. He just play hard than you against them. There's no real strategy to beat them. Kevin is pretty much the same. He almost always wins the top lane, and if he doesn't, he also don't lose it. He's just very consistent. I think Rocket has a chance to be in the top four. They're over a good team, but sometimes they go for a low risk, high reward plays for no reason. I still think they are one of the best teams in early game, but uh, late game, where well, they used to be really good, like in the team fights, they kind of lack now. Yeah, because early game is extremely solid, and then mid to late game, it kind of falls off a bit. They won against us in London at least, so they're doing something right at least. I'm a little confused by that. Connex saying that Rocket are one of the best teams in the early game. Rocket would definitely disagree with that. Yes, I completely agree. And it's interesting to hear the viewpoints because each of the players is talking mm. from a very personal standpoint. For me, their early game is good because I can't kill them. I, think he's, talking, I think he's talking about Yankos basically being but good early game. Truthfully, Rocket have just been mediocre at best all split mm. long. And they really need to shake things up. They need to actually get rid of the fear and start playing the game committed and maybe that'll help them out. Well, we'll see how it works out for them. Let's check out those lineups because on the blue side, it is Rocket. That means it's the Zazas in the top lane, Yankos in the jungle, Overpower in the mid lane, Selva as the AD carry and Vanda in support. And on the red side, it is Millennium with Kevin playing in the top lane, Cotton X in the jungle, Kerp in the mid lane, Creighton as the AD carry and Jay Ree playing the support role. 
So as the teams prepare for Champion Select, let's see how you guys called this game. According to LOLesports.com, 67% of you voted for Millennium. And they are honestly the highest seed in this matchup so far, so it's kind of expected to have the higher vote. Also, their uh, play style definitely counters that of Rockets. Rocket is a lot slower mm. in the mid game, especially in the mid game. And Millennium are a team that in the mid game, they like to roam around. They like to have Kerp and Cottonex impacting side lanes and generally trying to blow people up. With yesterday's team comp, even though Millennium were somewhat disjointed in the thematic approach, they still had the option or the possibility to blow people up. And we did see both uh, Cottonex and Creatin having some jumps with their Tristana Kha'Zix combo, but they just fell too far behind. And every time they did jump in, uh, Syndra with the DFG being played by Xpeke just went, ha, you will now die. Well, so they can't afford that today. And that pick and ban phase was actually very important because Fnatic focused Kerb. Yeah. And that clearly seems to be a bit of a downside for Millennium. If he gets focused in the pick and bans, if they can't get him on one of those explosive champions, there's a problem. We even talked to them after the game. They discussed it themselves. Like, yeah, we were, we were kind of in trouble in the pick and ban phase onwards. Yeah, I draw comparisons to Millennium to Gambit Lost Split where Gambit lost, but would only win games if Alex Sitch had a good game. And that's exactly what Millennium are now doing. If Kerb doesn't play well, Millennium don't get kills and wins. Well, Rocket obviously weren't watching the Fnatic game because they've left so much open here. Twitch and Elise have been banned out along with Twisted Fate. That means Kerb's going to get anything he wants here. Cassadin and Kale Ziggs is up. and Lulu taken away. Ziggs is out there. LeBlanc is out there. More importantly, one of Kerb's big main champions. Now, LeBlanc was available yesterday and Kerb opted not to play that. He did go for the Lulu yesterday, this time around banning it away. The reason I highlight the Ziggs is it is an overpower staple. It is something that he's played many times in the past. Considering that Elise has taken off the table and Lee Sin and Evelyn are up, you could also theorize that a jungle pick might be important for Yankos because he's also a comfort one. And something that we always say, an AD carry for Selva. Something that, you know, Rocket have a lot of weaknesses in their pick and ban phase, and the priority will be determined by these uh, high priority picks. Well, they're trying to force Cottonix onto a lease, it seems. Leasing was locked in as the first choice for Rocket. Of course, it means a lot was open, and Millennium do take away that Lucian along with Ziggs for Kerb. So, we're not seeing anything surprising here from Rocket or Millennium in terms of the picks. Because of the priorities and the heavy focus on the 80 carries, as well as those jungle bans, uh, jungle picks, it means Cottonix has only really got Evelyn to fall back on. I doubt he's going to run Kha'Zix in the jungle again. It wasn't good yesterday. I'm pretty sure the team decided that wasn't going to happen. Well, it happened yesterday. So this is the thing that makes me laugh. They decided now. How could it happen yesterday? Regardless, mm -hmm. uh, Evelyn is up, Jarvan is up if they want to go that route. And against Ziggs in the mid lane, Overpal, I doubt he's going to run Zerath. It's too immobile, especially when he starts charging up that Arcano Pulse in his Q. So uh, a lot of time being burned through, and we need to see what he's going to opt for. Oh, it's going to be Jackson that top lane for Zaz as the champion. He's run a few times before. Morgana, of course, also locked in for Vanda. Almost the de facto support choice right now, if available, along with Nami. And it's going to be tough for Rocket to make this uh, team composition potentially work because yesterday they also ran a Jax top lane into Fnatic. Fnatic ran a Ziggs top lane. So uh, if Millennium really want to surprise people of hell. They could lock in Orianna now and go for something similar. Um, but I don't know if they've got the coordination to play that style. I don't, their team fights are not necessarily as crisp. So with the Ziggs being locked in, I think for Kevin, something like Irelia or Aatrox, maybe Renekton, a champion that can dive in alongside Evelyn and then use the poke damage from Ziggs plus that assassination power of Renekton and Evelyn might be the way they're going to go for. Yeah, Renekton locked in. I was going to say, I don't see Kevin. He's a, a bruiser player through and through, not really want to adopt to a Ziggs like Soaz has. Of course, Evelyn was locked in for Connex. That Holy Trinity continues throughout 4.10, it seems, in the jungle. So very standard picks thus far, and on the side of Millennium, you don't really have hard engage. Evelyn needs to flank, Renekton needs to run straight at you, and with a single target stun being the only hard CC on the side of Millennium, Morgana can counter that. I feel like Millennium are leaving their support pick to last to potentially lock in a Leona for Jayri. He's played it five times this split. Thresh is available if he wants to go that route and go for the pick option. But I feel like Leona may be something they want, maybe something they're considering. And this may be why we're seeing like the likes of a uh, mobile AD carry. Selva could go Caitlyn, Selva could go Corky, but he had a very good game on Corky a few weeks ago. 
Well, it is Rise in mid lane. We thought we may get treated with something new from Overpower, but instead he's fallen back to a tried and tested. Not sure how that one's going to work out against the Ziggs in the mid lane. We did see it in Korea uh, last week, I believe it was. I remember seeing a Rise versus Ziggs. As it stands, Corky being picked up once again by Sullivan. He tried this one yesterday. Yeah, he, he did. And, and uh, in terms of the first game that he played, it was uh, Caitlyn and then Corky. My most impressive performance on him on Corky was actually uh, over in London, if memory serves, and, uh, you know, managed to put together some strong showings. Corky can do well against Lucian in lane because of the burst factor. He's got the trade with his Phosphorus Bomb, along with the Black Shield from Morgana to at least survive potential Thresh engages or Yona engages in this scenario. But Rocket have once again got a team that needs time to scale up. If Yankos is not omnipresent and helping out this Jax or this Rise, they can and will be bullied and pushed around. Renekton's going to make Jax's life difficult, and Ziggs is going to make Rise's life difficult in the early stages of the game. So a lot of pressure on Yankos on this Lee Sin to move around, support the lanes, and try get Rise and Jax to a split-pushing power or team-fighting power spike. We'll see how it works out for them. Of course, Millennium locking in Thresh as their final champion choice alongside Lucian. Standard lane match up there against the Corky Morgana. Corky seen as the, the counter to uh, Lucian these days. Yeah, I, th I think counter is probably a strong word, but he's, he's definitely on Equal par. trade. Equal yes, trade. Yeah. I think that's a better way to, to, to put it. And the one thing that I do like about the Thresh pick is it allows Jerry to put the peel down. It allows Jerry to knock Jax or Leeson away with a flay, put the box down and zone out multiple members of Rocket. Because Rocket have the same problem that Millennium have in this team comp. They are reliant on a champion either flanking and surprising their opponents or just running straight at them. So an, on the odd chance a Dark Binding or a Death Sentence lands, yes, there's your clear engage. But until that point, it's on the junglers and the top laners to run around from the sides and get involved. It worries me. Deficio said the same thing yesterday in one of the Rocket <laughs> games. That went on for 50 minutes. We'll see how this one goes, of course, with each team coming out. Who has the edge in this one? Tweet hashtag Rockat or hashtag Millennium or Millwin. Remember to get that one right. To at LOL Esports, and we'll see who you think landed the stronger lineup. Uh, once again, Rocket have late game scaling. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily have the late game decision making to go with their late game scaling team. But it's okay because neither do Millennium. That's the thing. Millennium have only ever thrived on pick comps, mm. have only ever thrived when they've got champions that can blow somebody up and then force an objective. With the Ziggs locked in there, with the Renekton, they can force objectives and they can play the Siege game very effectively, especially with the Thresh for all of the peel and the protection he offers. But we need to see if they can force those objectives, we need to see if they can move around the map uh, efficiently and strategically enough. Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Game two of Super Week underway for day two here. And it is Rocket starting out as the blue team up against Millennium as the red team. Who will come out ahead? Will Millennium manage to garner themselves some sort of advantage? Can they start picking people off? Or will Rocket manage to build up their super-powered champions and get it to the late game? So the two people that I'm going to be watching on Millennium's side this game will be Kevin on Renekton to see how effectively he can either bully Zazus and how he moves around the map. Secondarily to that is which J. Ree will we see today? Because J. Ree on Thresh has had some incredible Thresh games. And then he has also had some uninspiring Thresh games, is the way I think I'm going to put this one. And, you know, we've seen Millennium dismantle Super Hot Crew during the last split, where J. Ree just landed hook after hook after hook. But yeah, I haven't necessarily seen that same level in the summer split. And it does look like Rocker with a little bit of an early vision advantage thanks to some jungle wards. Oh, double one posted down. And Rocket moving in force, actually, for this one. There is a Millennium Ward there, and it's going to get swept very early on. I actually didn't notice that one getting picked up by Overpower. Yeah, so Rocket with the psych out play. That's either going to force Millennium to use another Trinket Ward, uh, which obviously gives Rocket the small vision advantage. In addition, it also makes them wonder, are they going to invade? Do they want to invade? Etc. Etc. Nevertheless, the ward goes down, and it looks like Rocket are just going to uh, double up, defend their own blue buff. Millennium starting on the red buff side of the jungle as the spawns are coming up. So no invades, no steals Ooh. on both games of the day. No. Advantage Millennium. Wow, that was very precursive. Expected a bit more from that one, but no. No big fight starting at level one, and it will be the battle to see who hits level two first. Will it be Salivar and Vandal? Will it be Creaton and J. Reed? The junglers both starting off red and blue start for them. And immediately, Salivar starting out 
throwing out his abilities. Overpower, Oof. not winning that trade, that's for sure. That was definitely not worth it. With Ziggs having the ability to empower his auto attacks and having the range advantage with those bouncing bombs, Overpower oh, playing so, so aggressive. He can't afford to do this. Ignite already used, chucking down those potions, but he's got next to no health left. And Kerb just trying to bully him out early on here. Zaza's doing the same thing on Kevin. I mean, it's funny, we heard, saw, talked about yesterday how Darian goes crazy aggressive on the Jax versus Renekton. Seems that Kev, Zazas has been taking a note out of his book. Connex smited. Coming in for the steal. He's going to come around and fight Yankos. Yankos takes a hell of a lot of damage in the background there from Connex. He was tanking up the red buff as well. Remember, Overpower. He's already taken some serious damage from Kerb. Kerb coming around the side there. Red buff taken away. Connex gets that. He's going to be forced to flash away. He's into the pit. Yankos follows through and gets himself first blood. Now Yankos takes some dragon damage. Overpower or Kerb, rather. Looking for some pressure. The hook lands on Devander. Oh, this is an early engage from Millennium. Do they want it? They catch the shot. Kraton gets That's himself killed. On towards it. Vander bouncing through. Double buff for Kraton. As you mentioned, Salavar taking some damage. Jerry, the death sentence is not going to be up for a while. And that bouncing bomb catching on the side of the map. So it wasn't quite able to bounce on through and Salavar. That is a massive swing for Millennium. Yes, they did give up first blood because Cottonex was caught out. But Overpower now has no flash available to him. Vander has no flash available to him. Yankos has got no flash. So if Millennium can set up any ganks, punishing those abilities, that's going to be good for them. More importantly, you've given Creatine double buffs on Lucian. He is going to absolutely wreck this lane if Seliva or Vanda try to trade with him. And I want to see how effective he can use these buffs. About two, a third of the cooldown has been uh, already burned through. And I think if he can come back and grab a decent CS lead, he can bully Seliva and Vanda around. Of course, getting that first blood could maybe build towards that build toward a cut. As you can see, the beginning of it, Zaza's taking some serious punishment from Kevin in that top lane. He's going to have to go back and buy mid lane. Overpower getting caught on. A good play comes out. Kerb goes on towards him. Kerb gets himself the kill. Millennium in the driving seat. Textbook. Overpower flashes to land the Rune Prison on Cottonex. Cottonex is going to be well aware of the timing available. And thanks to the fact that, uh, you know, Kerb has just got such strong range, that was an easy, easy kill. Cottonex can rinse and repeat and just. You know, keep getting those snowball rolling even further. Zaz is starting to miss out on a couple of CS there. Bottom lane, we can see Vampire Acceptor was picked up by Creaton on that first back. Of course, he's got himself double boss. Teleport from Kevin rejoins that top lane. Zaz is under pressure in that top lane as well. Both gone for Doran's Blade and Shield. Coming in armed knights and Connex. He's looking to pay a visit to the top lane now. Nope, going to back off. Yeah, so in terms of the lane matchups, you can see the supports are only just getting back to this bottom lane. Creaton does go aggressive onto Sullivan. Instant rocket jump away. Uh, Valkyrie away, rather. Um, but until the supports were there, Creaton and Sullivan had actually been farming quite passively, quite patiently. So Creaton not getting the absolute utmost out of these double buffs. Overpower starting off with a tier as well. That's going to put him... Even further. further behind in that lane, while the Chalice is already well in the way by Kerb. Zaza's getting caught out with the stun again from Kevin, tries to turn it around, but the aggression is simply not there, and Kevin is not fearful of Zaza's anymore. Yeah, I really want to see how Kevin decides to itemize in this lane. We've seen Renekton's going, you know, uh, Ravenous Hydra. We've seen Renekton's going Blade of the Rune King. And against a Jax and a Ryze who do build tanky as the game goes later, having a Blade of the Rune King on Renekton with three strikes from your Empowered W, is going to shred a lot of effective HP. 8% of current health per auto attack when you've got that above Fury W down. And it will help so much uh, in the mid game power spike if he goes that route. Overpass still has no flash. It's a counter gank though, as Yankos is coming in from top. So 2v2, they're going in. Well, Kerb's already thrown out that satchel charge, and that's actually missed completely. So he's going to have to try and run away from this one. Yankos with one more hit. Overpower wants to close in, but Connex running defensive duties. They're going to chase him down and see if we can catch him onto range here. Connex keep on pushing. Kerb yet to go back. Look at Yankos. He smells blood in the air. Overpower turns the aggression back onto Connex, and Millennium this time have to back away. So good damage from both of the respective uh, junglers and mid laners. And thanks to Overpower getting multiple bounces on on that flex on his E, it just shredded the magic resistance of both Kerb as well as Cotton X. So Kank was counted, no kill secured. So top lane, we saw some pressure there. Cotton X is making a return visit. Remember, Overpower's flash is down. Kerb's is down as well, though. And that's that's dangerous, dangerous stuff. Overpower can at least tank some of that damage. This time, Satchel Charge blows him in towards him. Kerb will go down, but Cotton X will get revenge. So good trading once again, 1v1. Gankos looking to contest with uh, Cotton X. But you can see the focus. Cottonex definitely wanting to get Kerp ahead. If Kerp can get an item lead and a gold lead with Ziggs, he can punish the uh, late game scaling of that Jax and that Rise. 
the Millennium. Putting a lot of resources into that plane, Jerry, playing super aggressive. Yeah, just dodging out, sidestepping away from that dart binding, not going to land. And, you know, Sullivan and Vander actually have kept up quite nicely in this lane, despite the punishment they had early on. Death Sentence not landing again. Kraton's double buff has now worn off. Of course, he got that kill very early on. Phosphorus Bomb traded on towards Kraton, dashes away, making sure that dart binding does not catch on. Overpower's going to get himself blue buff for the mid lane, of course, building up towards that. Um, Catalyst of the Protector. Catalyst of the Protector. Into Rod so of Ages. got this here on there. Rod of Ages will be picked up. Kerb is going to clear out himself. A pink ward. Successfully accomplished. Millennium done well to uh, keep themselves the kill lead. I really like Cottonex's gank uh, rotations in that mid lane. He definitely punished Overpower while his flash was down. But now that his flash is available, I'd like to see Cartonex trying to impact some of the other lanes. It does actually look like he's moving towards Zazus in the top lane, but there is a ward there, so Zazus should be able to, but it's not a pink ward, they're going in. Dominus run, he's get caught straight out, Cartonex is going to come in, Zazus is out down, he's not going to get away from this one, the question is who will be given the kill? It's Cartonex. So I think may have been better to give that to Kevin, regardless. Uh, very well played, uh, Kevin was able to bait Zazus into a very big fight, completely engaged, and you know, just all too easy, really, for Millennium to grab themselves that kill. No real pressure on any of the towers, and I think Millennium will be happy with that. The more time that they have to get Cottonex ganking and get Cottonex roaming, the happier that they will be. And they've got a CS lead in every single one of their lanes. So Millennium just pulling further and further ahead. And this is something Rocket have struggled with a lot. They always fall behind at 10 and 20, C uh, 10 and 20 minute marks against their opponents, uh, especially in recent games. It's something that the European teams have to look at. And if you think back to Season 3 World Championships, it's something that all of the European teams suffered from, falling behind in lane against the uh, Asian opposition. Of course, that's a worry because coming up soon will be those World Championships. They are getting ever closer. We're already halfway through the season, ladies and gentlemen. So it's not too far away now, even though you may be thinking, looking at your calendar, thinking the October finals date that has been gifted out there is a long way away. Not really for these teams involved. And look at this, Cottonex once again going to be in the same position as Yankos. I think he's moving around the vision and Overpower's aware of it. So Overpower and Yankos can jump onto Cottonex if he moves in vision range of that pink ward. Keep this in mind, it's in the bush. So this is going to be a two on one. But you can, you can see something's up. Cottonex playing very defensively. The moment Kerp left lane, he had obviously called that Overpower wasn't there and nothing comes of that potential uh, gank. So good read from both teams, I think. I think they saw the pink ward going down, which is why Cottonex was sticking right against the edge of that map there, making sure he didn't get spotted out. Instead, didn't go aggressive, backs away. Who will be going aggressive? It's going to be Kraton in this bottom lane. Lantern was thrown out there, not going to get taken, simply giving the shield across the Kraton. That was a very good example of how and why Corky can trade with Lucian. With a Phosphorus Bomb, as well as one of those rockets, trading with the, the uh, uh, piercing light from Lucian and his passive, they come away with relatively the same HP. The one thing is, Salvo's got fairly high mana costs and he's burning through his mana very, very heavily. So as he continues to spam and trade with Creatin, Jerry and Creatin will just keep pushing forward Ooh. and have that death sentence connected. You do feel that Jerry would have gone in. Very, very close death sentence. Top lane is Bill Jordan Cut. This was picked up by Zazas. Last time he backed away, Kevin just returning to lane, got himself the... Uh, Giant's belt along with the Vampiric Scepter. We'll see how that trade goes towards him. Of course, it does mean Millennium are going to go aggressive. Teleport available for Kevin, but not for Zazza. So you've got to feel that Millennium are going to take this dragon with ease. Yeah, no one from Rocket is around. They have no vision of the Dragon Pit. So other than an educated guess, seeing people leaving their lanes, Rocket were not in position to contest that dragon. And truthfully, they wouldn't want to. When you see that uh, Ziggs is up, Evelyn's up, you don't want to fight in those stages. So a wave has been cleared here by Kevin. And this would need to be a very aggressive dive from Rocket. There's no minions yet. Overpower got spotted. Overpower he just stepped out. himself, yeah. Yep, he stepped out. That, that was an overpowered gank, definitely. That was a, a novice mistake, honestly, from Overpower. That's clearly showing the pressure that is on their shoulders right now to keep getting victories. Zazas has pushed that wave in towards the top tower. Kevin is just going to be very cautious in his approach. But Connex, of course, showing that Overpower's up there. He knows Yankos would have been alongside him. It gives him time to come in and clear out the pink. Yeah, definitely. And if you look at the last backs with the dragon, the kill, 
Uh, Creighton has got a Blade of the Rune King completed at 12 minutes on the clock. He is 700 gold ahead of Selivar. And if you're going to compare combat effectiveness, Selivar is going to be 100% reliant on getting an ability damage followed by a Sheen proc and then trying to back off. Because if he gets into an auto attack battle with Creatin and his Blade of the Rune King, Creatin is going to destroy Selivar. So I expect Creatin and Jerry to get more aggressive in this bottom lane. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Cottonex trying to set up some ganks because of that big pass spike. Salavar's going to have to be cautious. He hasn't got Vander alongside him right now, so Jerry could honestly just come along and zone him out. Now Vander does rejoin. We'll see how this trade goes between them. Top lane is very clear between them, so nothing going on up there right now. This is the absolute focus, this bottom lane pairing, now that Creaton has that new item. Yeah, we'll see how that works out for him. In terms of this top lane, uh, Cognix again repeat gank, and Zazus, can he get away this time? Well, Zazus did have Flash available to him last time, didn't use it. This time, Agony's Embrace does not catch on Zazus. He may well be able to get away. He diving on towards the Jax on a turret is a dangerous thing at the best of times, and... This time, Flash was burnt and saved. Well, at least they got his Flash, so Zazus can be punished for it later. There is a fair amount of damage on the top lane turret, so had Zazus backed away, Kevin and Cottonex could have taken it down. Zazus does have the support of Yankos, though, so uh, Tower is defended for the time being. And this is definitely one of the longer laning phases that we have had. Um, you know, 13 and a half minutes has just been at single dragon. And the teams look fairly content. It's interesting to see Millennium let it go this long because of the fact there's a rise in Jax at scale. 2v2, here come the junglers. Oh, he's going to have to slide away. Kevin almost caught out, but he goes back aggressive and straight away Zaz is in trouble. The kick from Yanko <laughs> simply launches him to the side and there's still the kill goes the way of Millennium. Jairi can turn this around if he wants to. Dark binding on Jairi. Let's see which way he's going to go. Son of a Black Shield, a great hook on Vanna. Jairi follows through, throws down his ultimate. The damage from Grayton still not really focused there. And Salava are actually putting down more damage than Creaton. Yeah, definitely the case. But Creaton wasn't getting too many auto attacks and he held on to the culling as well. What they did do is they burned Flash from Salava and Flash from Vanda. So even though effective HP is in favor of uh, Rockat, Millennium come out ahead in terms of the summoner spell trade. Creaton taking some damage from that Phosphorus Bomb, forces him back away. Let's see how it works out for him. Yankos coming around here. He's going to find Jay Reed. Jay Reed already in a dangerous situation. Pulls the war down. Will spot him out there. He knows he's got the support of Cotonex. And they're thinking of going towards a death sentence. Didn't throw it out. Overpower looking to try and zone Kerp away from this blue buff area. He's going to have to run through mines. What are you doing, Overpower? He's going full on aggressive. He's completely got out of position. Megret Photobomb not even close to landing from Kerp there. The Ignite going down. Overpower diving deep on this one. He will get himself the kill, but where the hell is he going to go? Here comes Cottonex. He's coming in from behind. The rest of Millennium are trying to respond. Look for Creatin and Jay Ree. They want to find Rocket. Oh, Jay Ree caught out. Yanko's putting the damage down. Overpower comes in. He explodes him. And now the Dark Binding catching on towards it. Kevin teleports in. Slides on through and takes down Overpower. And well, Millennium having a couple of mistakes there as Overpower just goes insanely aggressive. Very sloppy play, I think, from both teams. Overpower obviously going very, very deep without much support from the rest of his team. He tower dove past the inner turret in the mid lane. Millennium were also unable, that's close, were unable to react. Not only did Rocket come out ahead, one for two in terms of kills, they also got the teleport down from Kevin because Kevin was forced to respond. So tower secured as well as red buff. So a lot of action very quickly and Rocket showing signs of life. Rocket committing to plays, regardless of their uh, uh, strategic value. One thing is absolutely sure, you cannot leave a Jax alone in lane for too long, because Zazas, you can see he's already on the tower in the top lane, he's taken down the top outer turret, now he's to bring some damage on towards the inner turret, he's already shredded half the hit points off, absolutely going horrendously wrong for Millennium in the lane phase there. Rockat just gaining everything from that crazy play of Overpower. All of that was just for a red buff. That was what Kevin teleported down to do. Yes, they got a kill on Overpower, but they stole a red buff away. And I do feel that Creatin was very hesitant on the culling. You've seen him just use the culling there to um, to clear out the minion wave, and he didn't use it in the fights that had landed previously. He did have enough mana for you know the jungle invade and the jungle combat, but he's just playing you know, playing safe, holding on to it. There's a lot of vision for Millennium, so this should be a fairly safe invade. 2v2, no AD carry. Salivo going to be the focus. Now they're going to turn it straight towards Van der Sol Shackles is pulled out there. Creton's still not with them. Not too sure why they're going into this 2v2. Gokonex going to try and put the damage down on towards him. Quickly turns it back around on and towards him. And that was incredibly bad play from Millennium. I don't know what they're doing right now. Cottonex 
I can only theorize wanted to avoid the Soul, sh soul Shackle stun. And he tried to move away from it the whole time, taking auto attack damage and pokes from Salivar. Instantly going down and was out of range for the hate spike. Ooh. Um, so he couldn't actually kill Salivar at the end of the fight. So Salivar gets away, gets himself his first kill of the game, and he grabs himself a red buff. It, it's all just a little messy for both of these teams at the moment, and Rocket are the ones that are coming out ahead. I'm not going to argue this kills. That's what counts for me. Six. 2-5 so far, Millennium have that advantage, it's a thousand gold differential, Dragon is up, Pinkwater falling left, right and centre, as Overpower gets another one, to the joy of the crowd. Not going to get that one, I'm afraid, and Millennium now, Moon is position for this Dragon. So I want to actually say that an aggressive Rocket is a positive thing for the team, because one of their limiting factors in all of their games previously is how passive they were. They almost seemed content to just let their opponents win, because they were playing to not lose, as opposed to playing to win the game. So while these uh, invades and these movements seem chaotic and, and uh, interesting, it is positive for a team like Rocket who have generally been much slower and generally been much more afraid to do anything. Speaking of afraid, Kerb's been throwing those mines down at his feet every single time he goes near anyone. He's so fearful of something jumping on his head, just like Zazas can do instead. This time the mines will clear out the minions. Salavar and Kreaton have been going head to head down this bottom lane. Kreaton, of course, with the CS advantage, did have that double buff early on, so not too surprised by that one. Mid lane, overpower. He's fell behind on Kerb, but got himself those two kills assists. Yeah, and it is something you do also expect in terms of that map. Uh -oh. next. He's found Salavan Yankos. This time around, Yankos kicks him away. Mega Inferno Bomb not going to land. Completely whiffing out there, and that's a couple of big spells burned by Millennium. Yes, but they did get the Dragon's Rage kick out of Yankos as well, so the engage power is not there if the Dragon fight were to break out. A lot of the AoE is down, so I feel if a fight were to break out here, the pressure's on Jay Ree to get a good box and to zone Rocket out. Let's see how effective it is. Teleport coming in, didn't see exactly. He's coming back, see behind them, so Overpower's the only man that they're chasing away here. Kreaton was zoned out single-handedly. Flash jump being caught out with the Kreaton strike. Kreaton taking very low on this one. They're going to focus on towards him. The question is, can Millennium react? They manage to catch down and support. Sullivan dies in towards them. Zazas comes in, pounces on towards Connex. Connex going down. Rocket trying to back out of this one. It's a two-for-two two fight. But with Zazas and Overpower still alive, Not you've got to feel Rockout are the stronger of the two. Look how aggressive he's going. Straight in towards their death sentence pulled in. The rest of his team not on the same page. Now the counter strike comes in on towards Kevin. He goes down. Connex gets another kill. On towards Overpower right off the side there. Connex taking so low. Yankos on towards J. Ree. Zazas does not get Connex down. It's a three for three in the end. Three for three in the big picture and another team fight that is just all sorts of Messi. Creatin was completely out of position. Take a look at this. His whole team is running up through the river. Now, yes, you, you can't really predict a flash leap strike engage from Zazas, but Creatin should never have been that far away from his team to begin with. I like the box usage from Jay Ree, albeit it may have been a tiny bit too early. He could have afforded a few more seconds to be more disruptive in this sort of mid-game or mid-fight stage. And another scenario, Overpound now decides to pull a creatine, and he just commits by himself without the support of his team, which obviously ends up costing him his life. If um, Rocket didn't have such strong duelists, this could have gone worse, but both teams making a multitude of mistakes and coming out even in terms of kills and gold at the end of it. Yeah, you've got to wonder if Overpower had have gone in with Zazas, yep. then suddenly it would have been different. Here we go again, ladies and gentlemen. Dark Binding landing. Jay Ree this time. Never caught. caught up. Sullivan caught in. Death sentence on him. Rocket have to disengage. The question is, can they? Kevin's going to try and catch on towards him. Mega Inferno Bomb only catching on the back side of Yankos. This time, Millennium will get that dragon. So this time around, it's Rocket with a positional error. Even though they were throwing out all of their CC, it ended up being somewhat of a bait. They landed the connection onto Jay Ree, and as Rocket moved forward, their whole team didn't commit. You needed Overpound Zazas on the front line. They weren't. Salva gets caught, so Millennium get the second dragon of the game. And a whole lot more kills for Kotonix. Five, two, and five. He's got 100% kill participation for his team because he's really been the one that's been starting uh, fights and, and engagements for Millennium. Yeah, that's a very fed Evelyn right there. That could cause some serious, serious problems as these fights start to develop, especially if it keeps so crazy aggressive there. The minions are going to take down that tower. It's the first one of the game. For Millennium, we saw, of course, Rockout peeled off. They got the red buff stolen away. Yankos managed to get in and get that one. Zazas cleared out that top wave as well. So everybody's going to step back and buy themselves some items. So Millennium uh, have extended their gold lead uh, ever so slightly. But the last time they did, 
it was Rocket that forced things back. Rocket moved themselves around the map and forced the fights that gave Yankos his four kills. I actually think we need to do some number crunching on Rocket's side because in the games that Rocket play, Yankos secures a whole lot of his team's kills. Had those four kills been distributed to Overpower, to Selva, to Zazas, it could even accelerate their late game spike that they're looking for. A lot of Ward fans in the house today, that's for sure. That's another one going down. Panda, this time, helping out on that one. Agent Legion actually first item completed correctly for Vanda, so interested to see. The supports, of course, have changed a fair bit in 4.10. And that is one of the items we have seen them falling back to. Yeah, and you know, with that Mikhail's Crucible, the name that I do remember at this stage of the day, um, it's just opened up these different build paths. And unless there is a, a lot of CC on your opponent's team, we've not seen that item very often at all. And my most interesting one is, is noticing which Threshers decide to go for the Relic Shield or going for the uh, Ancient Coin builds, as Jerry is obviously working himself towards that face of the mountain. Uh, currently got a Targon's Brace built in there. And I believe the makings of an Aegis himself uh, with that Negatron Cloak and Ruby Crystal. Good Dark Binding on Kerb, followed up. Gradually, Yankos careful, almost caught out with Pink Bait. Top Tower does go down. Kevin was the one that bullied that one out, so that gives a 2 2 even trade in towers. Millennium focusing on this mid turret. They're trying to push Rock out away from it, but got to be careful because if they do get caught out by one of those overpower. Room prisons, it will be a big problem for whoever's involved. So this is good to see though. Millennium are grouping, they're sieging, they're using the power of a blue buff Ziggs to try and shut the tower down. This is a strategy that they don't often use because they're so reliant on their burst damage. They did realize that Kevin had no teleport, so he has in fact come to join the team. And this is just going to be a five-man stack using the power of Ziggs and the blue buff to go for the tower. Oh, Yankos thought about it. Room Prison called on Kevin. Yankos wants to kick someone, but no easy targets. Kraton was the one he was focusing on towards. Kraton quickly used that Blade of the Rune King onto Yankos, and Rocket defend it briefly as they try and push back on towards it. Millennium did get themselves that middle turret. Scrying Orb used. Zazus looking to get involved. Very important to actually note that Zazus used his teleport for the impending team fight, and Kevin was able to slice and dice to safety, and we actually seen Creatin using his Blade of the Rune King, but it's not going to be enough to defend this uh, inner turret, because Zazus, again, he's looking for a fight, and the rest of Rockat, they're returning the siege with a siege of their own. Yeah, the Connex is actually looking to flank around himself, so if they were to push too hard, he would have come around the back, so... Cautious play from both of these teams, but with that tower not there anymore to back them up, Rockhan is suddenly feeling the need to back away from this one. They're also lacking a little bit in the vision, as are Millennium. If you look across the board, the siege has been going on for so long that all the wards have timed out, and everybody's having to get back out there and get themselves some vision to start pushing the waves. Creaton is going to farm out this big bottom wave. Yeah, if you contrast this game to the previous game, you can really see a difference in the number of wards being placed. We're at 25 minutes on the clock. There are four sweepers on the side of Millennium and hardly any wards in their inventory. They really need to get some uh, river and jungle vision for plays. And I expect that to happen in the next 30 to 40 seconds in anticipation of the dragon fight. Both of these teams had, uh, have attempted to fight around the last dragon and they should both be aware of the timer. So uh, let's see if Rocket can put their hands on it. Keep in mind though, Kevin's got teleport, Zazus does not. So it'll be up to Zazus to move himself into the right area of the map to be relevant. Pounces in there, doesn't quite catch Kevin sliding away. Kevin 205 going about his business quietly at the moment in that top lane, whereas of course Zazus almost got that Trinity Force complete, will be getting stronger as this game rolls on through. Overpower as well, we saw it of course with Selfie yesterday for the super hot crew. Those rise will become strong. Everybody knows it. Everybody's seen a late rise. Once they get incredibly strong, all items built up, they are very tricky to shut down. Unless, of course, you catch them out like Frogman was doing. Yeah, if you can position yourself correctly, you can focus them down. You know, Overpower, he's got that Rod of Ages. He's stacking it up. Um, I think it's actually getting very close to, to completed. Uh, it is completed, in fact, along with that Seraph's Embrace. I want to see where he goes with his tanky items because there is a good mixture of both physical and magic damage on the side of Millennium. So, you know, a Frozen Heart would not be uh, a bad idea. Reduce the attack speed on this Blade of the Ruin King Creator. The only problem for Rocket is they do need to get through those death sentences, Agony's Embrace, Minefields. So we'll see if they can make that work for them. Now, Millennium, 2v2. Uh, 
uh, 2v much more now as Rocket have got support. Doesn't look like they're going to get their hands on the blue buff. Yeah, taking that blue buff away from Overpower is a pretty big deal, oh. that's for sure. Jamie hooks on towards it. Well, then you were looking for a full fight here. They've got a ward down. Zelda's not there. We can see Kotnex. He can smite this one away and will take it. And that's going to take it off towards Overpower. Jerry caught out. Dart binding on Kotnex. He's going to be the focus. Has to use that Agony's Embrace to get the shield on him and slides the safety on the lantern. Yeah, so I think at the end of the day, it was Kotnex that smited that blue buff, did manage to get his hands on it. And Nick that away from Rocket, and all of that happened because of the fact that Salava was shoving out the bottom wave. Salava was getting rid of those minions and trying to force Millennium's hand. So Dragon is up. Again, not all that much vision. So teams are playing with uh, instincts and spidey senses. Let's see if Rocket can look to engage. Because again, there's no there's no super hard engage with the exception of that Counter Strike. Yeah, Millennium dangerously grouped up close together there. Zalzus was eyeing up another flash counter-strike on towards them. They bought themselves some time in this mid lane. Rocket take that, threw it down the nose. Even three and three. Rocket is still pushing here. Millennium are slow to react to this one. I think this is going to be a trade in a turret for Dragon. Yeah, definitely going to be the case. Um, Kerb did use his Mega Inferno Bomb, but I doubt it's going to be enough. You could see that Overpower was in fact tanking the objective. So Dragon for in a turret. Rocket. I think we'll probably be happier with that trade. They will be able to start team fighting for the next dragon or the following one, but they've got the inner turret down in the mid lane, which allows them to rotate for buffs. But now all of a sudden it's Rocket who caught with the pants around the ankles and Millennium looking to siege. I remember Overpower tanked up that. Of course, Silver was taking a lot of damage, so they can't get involved in this one. Overpower caught out around the side. Connex, vision given to him, but Millennium, they're going to try and get themselves in the inner turret, but Rocket are there, all trying to defend this one desperately. That tower going down though, and Millennium get themselves another. They are even at four and four apiece. Both mid lane turrets all down. It's just a little bit of a comedy of errors here between teams. No Millennium opt to go for Dragon. Rocket punished by going in a turret. Rocket then slow to back away and defend their tower. So Millennium punish. And it just seems that every time one team uh, makes somewhat of a misplay or is out of position, their opponents do punish them for it. So, you know, good, good play from Millennium to at least uh, bring themselves back ahead again in gold. But it is still a small gold advantage, only 4,000. And at some point, Rocket are going to start <clears throat> doing very well. Rocket's Jax and Rise will start punishing the likes of Renekton and Evelyn. The main thing it seems to be is they're more reactive plays rather than actually thinking ahead. They're not deciding this is going to happen, so we need to make sure this and this is covered off to prevent us losing out on it. And they just seem to be not doing that right now, Millennium. Going to try and force the aggression once again. Dark Binding, not the land. Pink Ward being cleared out, and that dragon that's taken away. Baron Vision from Rockant. Rockant are going to maybe sweep in and try and do the same. 30 minute mark about to be reached by these two teams. No CS records being hit despite the crazy aggression. 18 kills actually now. That was actually in about 20 minutes. We haven't seen a kill for the last 10 minutes. Yeah, and it's also Overpower that actually gave up both of those CS records. Overpass playing Lulu into Oriana and simply had no lane presence. Has done a better job on Ryze, uh, mostly because he's been the target of Kerb's auto attacks and poke. So Kerb hasn't been focusing as heavily on that CS. Ooh, that death sentence went wide. Yankos should be able to walk away. Uh, Millennium again, looking to set up a siege. We need to keep our eyes on the mana pool that Kerb has uh, got available to him. He's picked up that Void Staff. And I think Millennium can theoretically siege. They just don't want to get jumped on or flanked by Zazus. That's the, the, the big thing for them. So side vision is very important for them. Yeah, side wards for Rocket. Oh, Yankos this time around caught out with the stun. Hooked in as well with the death sentence. A lot of damage going down towards him. A good flay. He does manage to jump away from this one. There was no, no follow-up. Too early on the flay, actually, from Jairi. If he had hesitated to try to interrupt that safeguard, could have worked out in his favor. Nevertheless, does allow them to force Yankos down. away. So they've nope. no, it just nope. looks like clearing up vision. Um, you know, if they'd done more damage or killed Yankos, maybe they would have started it, considered it. But it's one of those situations you actually don't want to clump up because there's a lot of AOE damage from Ryze and from Corky with the Gatling gun, the rockets, the boss response. Oh. Got next, he's got two. This time Agony's Embrace is used. Mega Inferno Bomb catching both of them where they stand. Yankos goes in aggressive though. Connex taking a hell of a lot of the brunt of the damage there. Kraton wanted to get the vision on towards them to finish them off, but they got to be so cautious of Zazas flanking around the side. Two flashes burned on the side of Millennium from Connex and from J. Reef for that engage, and they don't manage to pick up the kills onto Overpound. Salivar. They were able to get away thanks to the tankiness that Overpower has actually built up for himself. But again, Millennium trying to punish Rocket for being 
somewhat out of position. Rocket just shoving out the wave and getting collapsed upon. I think we're going to be in for uh, a barren dance of fairly epic proportions here between these teams <laughs> because of the fact that they're relying on their opponent's mispositions to be punished by their, you know, either flanks or they're just straight up, I run at you, bro, to start a fight. Well, bottom lane pushed in. That's going to get reacted to by Zazas. He's got his home guards. He's going to steam straight out there. Still no tanky items built up by him. Mercury Treads, of course, to prevent himself getting locked down too long. That wave is going to get cleared out. Kevin himself got that teleport up. Overpowered this time. Blue buff is picked up. Baron started off. Scrying Wolf not available for Rocket. It was used early on. They will get vision though. Here comes the teleport. Zaza's coming in. Yankos tries to get a little bit too close, but immediately is forced away by the Cullin. He hasn't gone down yet though. Baron being peeled away from by Millennium. And this is a delayed fight. Zazas once again just waiting for the counter strike to come back off cooldown. Jerry getting caught out with the Dark Point. And there's the Mega Inferno Bomb catching onto two of them. Rockat's going to get focused on towards, but the damage is going down nicely from Overpower. He's still alive around the side there. Kill does manage to get himself one kill. Salva replies. He goes back on towards Kevin. Gets himself a second. And now it's a two for two between the two teams. Rockat have to peel away from this one though. Two for two and completely even. Top laners and supports going down. And Millennium do not pick up the Baron. So Rockat a little too late to respond, forced to use the teleport. So in the grand scheme of things, Millennium could potentially play a split push game to try and take advantage of that. Rocket and Millennium are just throwing everything at each other. And because neither team can 100% lock down their opponents, all of these fights just get messy. Saliva is untouched as Millennium are trying to focus down Overpower and Zazas, and Overpower manages to get away thanks to that very beefy shield. Um, from his Seraph's embrace. And you have to give props for Selva. He had a good positioning. He got a lot of damage down with his Trinity Force and Infinity Edge. So, you know, it's it's good from both sides, but it is also sloppy because they're not getting onto the same targets and not focusing down quickly enough. Chunk of pink walls being picked up by Rocket. Let's see if they can make use of them. 59% of you now that votes down to definitely swinging Millennium still in the driving seat. They were ahead, of course, in the original vote. Still only a 3,000 gold advantage. Dragon up in two seconds. Rocket already in position for that one. That's going to draw that gold ever so close. So that won't last very long. And actually, Millennium might get caught out of position if they try and go too hard on this one. Yeah, there's so many members of Rocket nearby. Keep in mind, Kevin can join the party as long as a ward goes down. But there's not that many wards on Millennium's side. Uh, four reds and a yellow trinket compared to four reds and a blue trinket for Rocket. So uh, a lot of vision denial is on the cards, and both teams are just looking for team fights. Both teams are just looking for straight up engages because they haven't actually put much effort into the split pushing or much effort into the tower pressure. I do think Rocket have done a better job because almost every time you look at the mini map, the Rominians pushing Millennium's bottom in a turret. So they are doing a good job of keeping that lane pushed out. Blue have taken away from Kerb. The problem, see how the cooldown affects on him as Rocket continue to farm out just about everything close by. Salivar actually down the bottom golems taking that away, but again, Millennium have got no vision of the jungle area of even themselves. They've only just warded that out. They've really just got those few wards. And Rocket way ahead in vision right now over Millennium. You can see they're sweeping out, making sure they've got the Baron pit covered off here. And Millennium, without a scrying orb, to try and get them some vision in towards this river area. Zaza's trying to jump on towards Kevin. He's just going to slide away. He's got the support of Connex. Not going to follow through. All too easy for Kevin. And while Rocket do have the vision advantage, let's see if they can use it. Because having the vision advantage means you either punish your opponents for mispositions or you pull them into areas you want them. Connex gets spotted out, so you're going to have a 2v2. But I think Overpound Zazas would most likely come out ahead in that particular scenario. So, again, it's just both teams battling over vision supremacy, not necessarily battling over objective supremacy with vision, if that makes any sense. Kevin, there's our pink ward. And Millennium just brute forcing their way in. They've grouped up, and they're going to take over. Baron pick control vision shortly. Yeah, Rockout simply stepped away from that one. Didn't want to fight for it. Let Millennium come in as a five, sweep through, clear I all the wards. Think, I think we could have predicted that. Mm. 40, 41 minutes is Rockat's average I reckon average they're going to do it again time. now. And Rockat are going to come in and put all their wards down. So you see, like, this, this is the point. Instead of making use of the vision to try and bait, like if Rockat wanted to, to pull a Baron bait, they could have backed away, allowed Millennium to get all the way up, and maybe lull them into a false sense of security. Uh, try push out the waves. But because Zazus doesn't have teleport available, Rockat don't really have that We'll send someone away and we'll make you think the teleport time is long enough to cause a problem. And unfortunately, neither team is really uh, 
really demonstrating any sort of ability or uh, tactical plan to to, to 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 take their opponents. This is this is actually potentially a problem, although Yanko starting out the Baron himself was not the whole issue. Rocket could try and sell him a dummy and actually two-man it with Zazas and Yankos. Oh, definitely the case. Uh, Zazas with Blade of the Rune King and that Trinity Force can shred through Baron with somebody tanking it up. And, you know, even with the sort of engaged long-range spells connecting, nobody is around to respond. Nobody's around to make a play happen. I would love to have seen Millennium trying to push out the bottom wave or push out the top wave and push in the mid. You know, just get, just get the power of Zig's bombs under a tower in your advantage. If Millennium had more wards, they could ward up the blue or the red side of Rocket's jungle and then just try and pull Rocket towards them. Use the peel and the bombs and the range of Ziggs and Thresh. Now, Kevin, not even at threat because Yankos doesn't want to boot him backwards. You don't want to kick Renekton into the middle of your team. No, nope. they're going to go and clear that top wave, clear out the wards and do the same again. Rinse, repeat. This is, this is honestly a serious problem that the bottom teams always face. And, th you know, you look at the, the likes of SK, despite the fact, of course, they did just get destroyed by Alliance. They do not generally have these problems. They know ways around it. They see, they read the game two, three steps ahead. And it seems a Millennium Rocket, they're just simply reacting and not reading the game. This is the thing that teams like Alliance and SK and Fnatic yesterday do, is they force a tower. They will go through the jungle. They will take advantage of your lack of vision and they will just sneak a tower away. With the amount of armor that Kotnex and Kevin have built up, they are you know, easily, easily able to do that. Salivar is in the mid lane. This means Millennium yeah. want to go in. Let's see if Zazas can get away. The catch on towards Zazas. Good dart binding. Zazas steps away. Salivar's on towards the inhibitor turret. That's going to be Zazas. Oh, he jumps away with the counter strike. Now he's going to get the caught wolf. with the Vector Inferno bomb. <laughs> the wolf catching on towards him. But that's going to be the inhibitor turret going down. Salivar catches on to that. Millennium only got a kill. They didn't get the Baron. They didn't even go for, towards it. And Salivar and Overpower, they've taken the inhibitor. They Millennium totally caught out. Yanko stopping Connex in his tracks. Vanda's coming around the side. That's preventing them from backing away and rock out finally make a play yeah with the super minions in that middle lane that's gonna give them the tools to make the plays that they want and millennium committed so many objectives to that kill uh, uh, ultimates rather to the kill I have to say LCS big play goes to the blue wolf because it trapped Jax from getting Ooh. around now they've caught Kerb out Kerb caught out J Reeves instead gonna be the focus target there's not enough damage focus on towards him Rockout gotta be careful there's still only 4v5 here which is why they're stepping away Zazas is up in six seconds and he has teleport available which is why Millennium they're too late to start this Baron look at the bottom lane he could even go there we need to see if Rocket peel away from that one with a four man they could still contest in the Baron pit but they want Baron dealing damage from the back line Overpower has no flash available he's looking to cut them off Overpower's gonna come from the back line if they want to start the fight and instead they've just scared Rocket away and because Zaz has teleported to Baron that he wave. cannot teleport to bottom that wave is gonna cause problems in the bottom wave I think Rocket are gonna get themselves another tower here there's a massive minion wave down that bottom area. You can see the range minions doing all of the damage. It's another turret for Rockout that's going to go down. And Millennium, they've just spent way too long. They had the advantage and they've thrown it away trying to bait the Baron. And Rockout didn't fall for it. Yeah, that's a Millennium jumped on a kill opportunity and that was a positive play from Rocket. Rocket did bait Millennium. They didn't use Baron, they used the potential of kills by showing uh, champions in other lanes. And Millennium just took it, hook, line, and sinker. Now, with Super Minions in the middle lane, the pressure is once again on Rocket to do a similar thing. Get some vision down in different areas of the map and then try to push these side lanes. Minions have taken the bottom lane, but it took, I'm going to say, 13 or 14 minutes from the first time that I've seen Seliva shoving that wave out and Zazas shoving that wave out to get the tower. And we need to see if Rocket can be more effective getting the top in the turret down. But gold lead is now going to go to Rocket as this dragon goes down. Everybody, of course, Close to level 18, apart from Vanda, who of course is only level 13. Nevertheless, for the first time in a long time, Rocket have the lead. They steal away the blue buff, and oh, Millennium are kind of floundering here. They haven't really got a response to Rocket. We talked about it at the start. Rocket, they are a late game team. Yeah, and the problem for Millennium is they don't have anybody that can deal with Zazos' jacks. With Blade and Trinity Force, and we'll see what he upgrades his chain vest Megatron if he goes GA, you're not sure. But regardless, with his tanky stats and the damage he can put out, he is a great one-on-one -on -one duelist. Renekton does have an item advantage for the time being, but very shortly will not be able to handle uh, Jax alone. So, super minions have been shoved out. Millennium are forcing Rockat's hands. 
Once again, Overpass looking to cut off uh, Millennium. He wants to come in from behind, flank them, and prevent their exit. And I think he's got a good attempt. I think they're going in. Here's the fight. They're going to try and turn. Connexo taking all of the damage front loaded. Overpower comes around the back, just explodes the AD carry. Connex scored out. He's going to be the next focus. Overpower does go down. It's a trade. Even back and forth. Kevin taking all the damage. That's to be compounded on towards him. Will get another kill. Kevin goes down. It's Salivar that gets that one. Curve though, still pretty low. Does manage to get on towards Salivar. It's a double there. Sazas is going to turn the damage around the land to pause him in. But Yankos gets himself a double, comes back around, Kurt goes down, gets <laughs> a shutdown nonetheless, but Rock out come out on top, they get themselves the ace. Now there are super minions pushing through towards that middle of the base, Zazus and Vanda are setting their sights on more objectives and more towers. Another team fight that in theory looked okay, but took such a long time for Overpower to get involved that he just got blown up. So the two things to note, Kreutz on the back line is about to get melted, and as he gets shut down by Jankos and Overpower, the rest of Millennium are able to get some good damage and split up the team of Rocket. So this ends up meaning Millennium can trade three for five. The problem is, it is very late in the game and that scary Jax that we talked about is monstrous. He survives the entire fight, manages to get away and actually grabs that top inhibitor as well. Yeah, fantastic stuff. So two inhibitors now down for Millennium. That advantage they had, they must be looking at this game. They need to check out the replays and think, what did we do wrong? We stood around and we basically cleared wards for 30 what minutes. What did we do wrong? Not a lot. What did we do? Nothing. That's the problem. It's not proactive enough. It's not forcing objectives. It's not putting yourself in positions where you can punish your opponent and create a lead. Instead, you're waiting for your opponent to make a mistake. And Rocket, while they made a few mistakes, uh, they weren't big enough to really cost them. You know, Rocket are just down four towers to nine. They've got super minions in the top lane, an exposed inhibitor. And what do Millennium do? They go clear some more wards. Well, I mean, the thing is, it's, it's obviously easy for us to look at the whole yes. map. We have the whole view of the situation. It's very different for the teams themselves. But Millennium, we've got to look at this and think, they get caught in this situation so often, so long they have these Baron Dances. And again, when they have that split pusher, they're going four and one. Kevin will go up the top, Zazas will go up the top. Kevin will go down the bottom, Zazas will go down the bottom. They need to be pushing multiple lanes if they want to try and go for the Baron. I completely agree with you. And when Millennium have the lead, yeah, we have the op the, you know, the, the luxury of full map vision. Hell, Millennium can buy wards to get it. Uh -oh, they've caught Kevin, Kevin and they're going in. He's going to lock in there, but Connex tries to come around the side. Agony's embraced. Jankos goes aggressive on towards this one, kicks him back in there. Zazas is going to lock him up with the counter strike and he goes down. Now J Reed's going to get focused upon. He gets turned out there. Kevin's trying to do tanking as much as damage as he can. Mercury Inferno Bomb stops Rock out in their tracks, but it's a two for zero. So managing to catch Kevin, and unfortunately, because Millennium are not on the same page. They just get melted under the pressure and the focus of Rocket. Aaron has respawned sitting there. And I just think, you know, for, for Rocket's side, they, they've got enough of a lead and they've got champions that can force team fights. They don't need to be afraid. As long as they're grouped up and not uh, separated, they can simply overpower their opponents. And they've grouped up as a five man, four man, rather. And gonna get the second inhibitor. Flash is available for that man in the middle. Inhibitor will go down and overpower and crew maybe will back off and you can see Yankos already moving towards that Baron pit. 13 seconds on the spawn for Cottonex this time around they can start it and take it. Pink Ward having to be used to clear out Vision but there's no reason why they shouldn't just go straight for it. No, Red Buff secured on the way out and there's very little Millennium can do. And I just think Rocket, they, they, you know, they waited patiently. Is it stolen? No, not this time. Um, you know, Rocket did a, a, a good job of holding out and while it was made easier because Millennium didn't play super uh, proactively, you know, you, you, we set it in picks and bands. If this game goes late, Zazas can split push, Overpower's become a monster. And it just has hit that point where Millennium cannot burn through absolutely everybody. Quick deal with Slash has been picked up by Celebi. He's going to make sure he doesn't get locked up this time around, avoiding Kevin at the moment has been throwing himself towards him along with Jay Reed. So, Rocker with the Baron buff. Two inhibitors down for Millennium. Now we're going to focus, it seems, on the bottom lane. They want to do it by the numbers. Tutorial style, take every single tower and inhibitor down. Look at clearing out all of their jungle and all five members moving en masse in towards this blue buff and bottom lane. And they could have done that with Zazus a little earlier, but uh, you know that's, that is, of course, hindsight. With Super Minions in two lanes, I think they're just going to play patient. And now we can see how and where Rocket decide to engage. Because they do have a GA 
uh, Frozen Heart, Randian Omens on multiple uh, champions, they can even tower dive. And I think that might not be a bad idea for them. If you force Millennium to start a fight uh, when they're slightly split up or when they're not really prepared for it, you can just use your champions that have so much damage and so much, you know, AoE to shred through people. Selavos also got that blue buff. So he's going to be able to continually spam all of his spells and make Millennium's life even more difficult. Oh, Kevin, you don't want this fight. Overpower's going to be joining you. Connex tries to come around the side, but look at that. Kevin shredded half the hit points off him before Overpower comes around. While this is happening, they're pushing the bottom lane now. That's going to be an inhibitor to the force. And it's a 3-2 split. They're trying to defend this one off. Connex taking damage. Otazza jumps on towards him. The rest of Millennium peel up there. Can they get the damage down on Rocket? Because they're leaving themselves exposed down the bottom. Mega Inferno Bomb not going to get the kill. Rocket do not manage to finish off. Grayson. Oh, it's a risky fight. That's only a Guardian name. Angel, he pops. Yankos comes Ooh, back around. Scared. Gets on towards it. Kevin caught out. Yankos gets hooked in. He will go down. Now Rocket come back around. They will get themselves the inhibitor. Meanwhile, they didn't get anything in the bottom. And that was a one for one trade. But that top lane of that big tank is no longer with Millennium. No, he is not. But they did get the GA down from Zazus. The thing is, Zazus and Overpower were in a 2v3 situation with Millennium. And arguably, you could say they could have been winning. Zazus and Overpower were half in, half out. Overpower full retreat. Zazus decided to re-engage and carry on fighting. If Salivar and the rest of Rocket had not returned, Millennium may have been able to pick up some more kills along the route. And look at that gold difference. Rocket being, you know, three, four thousand gold down, have now accelerated to close to eight, nine thousand gold up. It's a big swing, that's for sure. It all stood around that deliberation, that lack of decision making, honestly, on Millennium's part. Nobody willing to risk it. We talked about Rocket, how scared they were of risking. Any big decisive movements, well, Millennium absolutely caught doing the same thing. Yeah, and I do think that Rocket should probably have put more emphasis on getting that bottom lane tower and inhibitor. If they had lost Rock, you know, Yankos and Zazus, maybe one of them in the process and the other had made it out, but they got the objective, it could have worked out. Um, especially considering there's no Nexus turret. But, you know, they decided to go for the team fight, decided to try and make that play, and, uh, you know, end up losing Yankos, puts a big stall button on their siege, and we're just going to need to see how they actually break this one down. Well, everybody is back in the lanes for Rockat. Can push this one through. Baron Boff is still on them, only for another sort of 10, 15 seconds, though. That's going to wear off very soon. So that won't be available on this push. Big minion wave in the top lane. Cotnex is going to defend that one off, but Rockat realize that. They know that they're going to cause a bit of pressure on towards them. They have to try and make it count now. Zaza's caught out there, leaps away. Not going to happen this time around. Yeah, but Celebus off on the side lane. So if anyone from Millennium jumps onto him, he could be in trouble. The four-man stack from Rockat Definitely setting his sights on inhibitor. And there goes JV! Oh, 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 didn't want that one, that's for sure. Kicks him away. Megan and Funabob not doing the damage it should do. And coming around the site. Salva. Oh, he's not caught out. Has the Valkyrie away. Gets out just alive. But look at the Nexus. The super minions are coming in towards that turret. Rock out and just keeping them busy here. Caught next in for Millennium lose out this fight. They will lose out their base. Kevin's taking up all the damage, but there is a Jack just beating on his backside. He goes down. Connex, he can't even get involved. He can't even tank the super minions. He's too low on health. The rest of Rocket can move in and finish the game. It looks like they may want to. There's a 65 second death timer on Kevin. Zazus has teleports available so he can rejoin the fight for the potential final push. Saliva has lifesteal stole. Got a lot of HP back from Minions as he gets the bottom inhibitor turret and Rocket may be setting themselves up. Zazus has rejoined the fight. Inhibitor going down. Yankos and Overpower on towards that one, that middle wave. Bottom wave is also being punished. You can see Salavar putting the damage down on towards him. Overpower gets that one down. Super Minions continue following through. They're in the top lane. They're in the middle lane. Rocket keep on pushing through. That one next to it just needs a quick breath of air. There it is. He's going to see coin towards it. Zazus takes down that bottom inhibitor. He's going to move on through Millennium in desperate fails. Now, Kevin, 24 seconds until he respawns. Rocket keeping the pressure on towards Millennium. Kotnex doing what he can in defensive duty. Still no dark binding will land the Millennium. The I'm not sure Rocket... The nail, but I don't think they can do it. Rocket haven't got the memo that you've got to hit uh -oh. the Nexus, and they finally jump in. Jerry's down. This is the final fight. Can they keep them at bay, though? The culling coming out from Creaton has a lot of damage on it, but just not focused. Kerb gets caught out. Sonya's out. That's pop there. Sullivan does go down, but Kerb will follow. Yankos now. Kevin respawns. Get out there, but good. Lock up with the Rune Prison. Overpower trying to catch on towards him. A lot of damage back and forth. They need to keep the Super Minions off this Nexus. For now, Millennium survive. Rocket need to hit the 
damn Nexus if they want to finish the game. They dwindled, they waited, they tried to get the super minions up before committing to a fight or before committing to blowing the Nexus up. And because of that delay, it allowed Millennium to get a lot of damage down onto Rockat and for Kevin to respawn. So that ends up giving them a 4v2 for a few minutes time. You can see Rocket have regrouped, they've spent some of their money and they may want to reapply the siege. There's still fairly high death time. Uh, death time is on the side of Millennium. Rocket just really struggling to get that final, final hurdle to, uh, dealt with in Creatine. He can't even deal with the super minions. Yeah, he's struggling here. He needs the help of Kevin. He's pulling him towards the fountain instead, though. Not going to hit the next up. So the rest of Rocket moving in force here. Sazas comes around still. Death time is on three members. And Millennium have to use everything. Creatine's going to be careful. He gets kicked back on towards the fountain. They're focusing on towards Kevin. Kevin tanking everything up here. They've got to be dangerous here. They're going to go straight on towards the next. And Sazas takes it down. And Rocket takes the win over Millennium. It wasn't pretty, but it worked out. Rocket making Millennium lose three games now. Three out of the last four games for Millennium have been losses. And for both of these teams, there's so much to talk about in terms of decision making, in terms of objective play. It was sloppy, it was messy. In the late game, it was all Rocket. However, while we did say that, Rocket clearly were lacking in their decision making. If you look at the last seven games, they're six one up. And can't that, can't that, disagree with that's that. That's a record you can't complain at, despite the fact clearly they're lacking confidence, clearly they're lacking decision making, but they've won six of the last seven games. Yeah, they are doing very well. I mean, Rocket have had indecisive victories. And you think of the two games at London that went 50 plus minutes. You think of this game, 52 minutes. Why they didn't just jump on the Nexus when there were four members yeah. up, you can argue that. When you've seen how quickly Zaz has burned through it, yeah, of course there were more members, so yes, it is more difficult to get the Nexus down. But well, we know Kevin can't catch people around the Nexus. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, buddy. yeah, that's, that's a little low. But again, you know, just problems for Millennium. They didn't siege, they did it once for one tower, didn't group up, didn't split push, neither did Rocket. Zazus was so rarely in a side lane with teleport available. And I just think there's, there's still so much to learn for these guys, uh, especially if they want to stand any sort of chance in playoffs. Because well, the gap between top and, and middle and bottom is growing heavily. We went from a 21-minute game to a 52-minute game there. Kind of expected. We said it at the start. We knew it was going to be a long one. Rock out when they're always involved alongside Millennium. It is always a long game. It really is. And it's one of those symptoms of a team composition that needs to have correct positioning, correct vision, correct decision-making to engage. And when you don't really have all of the three at a top tier, it does drag the game out. Well, some of it that did play well in that game was Yankos. Fantastic score for him. He's standing by Rift side with shocks. Thank you very much, D-Man. Um, congratulations, Yankos, first off. Another great game from you on Lee Sin. That's very terrifying, Lee Sin, you play. Talk us through, as the casters mentioned, that long end haul in that game and how decision-making goes, because you guys have mentioned before, we have a lot of problems being confident in the end phase. I mean, we usually have problems early game. That's why uh, we kind of, you know, don't know how to close out games in the late game. But this time, uh, I think they just tried to bait Nasher too many times and they let us push mid inhibitor for free pretty much. And, you know, from that on, we just kind of snowballed. Yeah, and everybody stepped up to the plate in this game. Yesterday, we heard Overpow saying how, well, I'm sorry for my fans, I'm not doing that well. How do you guys as a team try and, try and maybe give him more confidence of work around that? I mean, we are just playing as much as possible because, in my opinion, we are underperforming right now. Last season, we were much better, and now we, I don't know what happened. Well, we are just worse. So we are just trying to improve. So last season when you guys had a couple of uh, losing games, I noticed that same demeanor in the way you guys were like, oh, we're doing bad, but you're six and one right now, so it isn't that bad at all. Where do you think that comes from and how can you turn it around? Because you should look at the bright side. I don't know, maybe we are just playing worse teams. I mean, Alliance and SK are pretty much the best at them and we play them um, next week again. So we are probably going to, you know, go for 2-0, easy wins. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. We are just trying to improve, and every week we are better, so we get few wins. Chin up. You can definitely beat them. That's what you think. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. All right. We're going back to base to charge up our side stones. But when we come back, SK Gaming takes on the Super Hot Crew. <laughs>
Let's win this game. Kreaton, Derek, you're very low on this one. They're going to focus on towards him. The question is, can Millennium react? They manage to catch down and support. Sullivan dives in towards them. Zazas comes in, pounces on towards Connick. Rockhand's going to get focused on towards, but the damage is going down nicely from Overpower. He's still alive around the side there. Kill does manage to get himself one kill. Sullivan replies. He goes back on towards Kevin. Gets himself a second. Kerb, though, still pretty low. Does manage to get on towards Sullivan. It's a double there. Zazas is going to turn the damage around the land to pause him in, but Yankos gets himself a double. Comes back around. Kerb goes down. <laughs> It's a shutdown nonetheless.